They have five minutes. They'll get a warning from me at two minutes, one minute, and then they will be stopped at uh, zero minutes. So we are ready to go with Patricia Solis, who's going to talk about how, how knowing the purpose of mapping impacts the map and the mappers themselves. So you have five minutes, Patricia. Okay. Uh, how many of you are based at a university? How many of you are students? A couple of them. How many of you have youth mappers chapters at your universities? One. Okay. So um, I would like to invite you to ha uh, establish or have your student groups affiliate with the Youth Mappers Network. Um, this is uh, um, 160 universities in 42 countries where students lead their own chapters and groups to form uh, research, to uh, contribute to OpenStreetMap, and we support them through a number of different programming uh, with fellowships, with uh, leadership programs, um, recognition, and all sorts of things. We are funded by U.S. Agency for International Development, and we have a strong emphasis on countries that USAID serves in the South. The first talk this, uh, that I want to talk to you about is how knowing the purpose of mapping impacts the maps and the mappers themselves. We actually say that we don't just build the maps, we build mappers, um, and that's really uh, where we start there. And what is it that the mapping process, how is the impact on the students that we serve? Um, they all do some kind of mapping with a humanitarian purpose and humanitarian context, so wanted to really get at that, uh, what is that contribution of performing the mapping in this way on the students? And how can we tease out that the fact that they are mapping for humanitarian purpose uh, and, and their experience with building the map and what they're learning. So here's the original research question, and the methodology was that uh, this was at Texas Tech University when I was faculty there. I had students who were in a psychology class, so they had zero experience with mapping. They were brand new beginner mappers, and um, I, I divided them into two separate groups. Uh, made sure that they were representative of the university in terms of ethnicity and gender. Um, and only one of those groups was provided information about the context, about the location, about the humanitarian purpose of the task. And then the control group only learned the technical parts about how to map. And so again, the informed group learned about the humanitarian context as well as youth mappers, and we had a project on food security that we were mapping in northern Ghana through one of our other chapters. Um, so quickly, I, I measured a number of different things. Uh, what, some of them were based in the category of sort of performance metrics. How did they actually do? What was their productivity? How good were their edits? Um, how many errors? Um, what types of errors did they have? And then afterwards, uh, you know, doing surveys both before and after to understand their awareness, the satisfaction, motivation, and some measures of empathy. They all measured for 30 minutes only, and I'll just briefly breeze through the results, but I can show this to you if you come to the poster session later. So in terms of performance measured, we learned that informed mappers made similar number, but more types of error than those who were uninformed, but they reported greater satisfaction, and they believed they mapped more edits, and they thought that their work was done better, although it really was not. So conclusion, beware of the do-good effect. Beginner humanitarian mappers might believe that they are doing well just because they are doing good for the world. So we put that into our training now to make sure that they understand that they might make more kinds of mistakes, um, but build on that, right? Um, in terms of sort of a general effective uh, perspective, there's a number of statistically significant results where you can see with all these stars on there. Basically, uninformed mappers grew less positive about technology in general. They kind of got grumpy after doing these new technologies, but the informed mappers were significant more likely to say that technology benefits society as a whole. So this might be one way that we can successfully introduce science and technology by giving it this purpose um, and connecting it to that humanitarian purpose, to new students. Finally, there was a ton of... Uh, ton of uh, results on empathy and workforce readiness, and the, we learned that the informed mappers wanted to change the world, they were, wanted to be global citizens and give back, 
and they were more interested in how other people feel. So, end with this question to you. Could humanitarian mapping become a place to start to teach empathy? Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Next talk <laughs> is contextualizing OSM in mapping favelas in Brazil. So, Silvana is going to present. So, you have the floor, Silvana. Hi, can you hear me? Or the microphone? It's okay. Uh, so, my name is Silvana. I, I, am, I am from Curitiba, south of Brazil. And uh, I'm present here a, a study that uh, is going on uh, with my then master's student Everton, and now he's doing a PhD. And uh, the introduction, uh, it's about favelas. It's a place 6% of the Brazilian population lives, up to 20% in some areas like Rio de Janeiro. And uh, uh, there are places that are, there are a lot of informality and social vulnerability, and uh, they are very difficult to map from outside or from abroad. Uh, so uh, we think that we need uh, to engage with the local population to map these areas. Both they need uh, the, the geographic information they are lax because most for the government they are invisible places and uh, still they have a high demand for geographic information to improve housing and sanitation and a lot of services this population needs. Uh, we started working with this NGO, it's called TETO, it works in Latin America building houses using uh, students, uh, uh, university students mainly as volunteers Years, and they started with that Excel map over there. It was from uh, uh, people that live in the community that they are trying to make maps using Excel. And when I said that, I saw that, I say we need to do something. We have the tools to, to work with them. So uh, the methodology of this study, it was in the six areas with 15,000 residents that the NGO worked and uh, using 32 questionnaires and the observation of 200 volunteers in these areas. Um, we use actor network theory to observe and uh, using the NGOs volunteers as mediators with the citizens to make them uh, the mappers. And this is, was the final result, is we need to train the mediators in cartography. You need to train both citizens and mediators with OpenStreetMap tools. Uh, we found that uh, almost half of people uh, use, uh, access internet by smartphones. So we are looking uh, in tools to map using smartphone, not like a traditional computer lab that is not easily uh, reachable inside the community. You have to take people out. So, and uh, one main thing, it's the motivation to map, it's linked with other activities. Uh, so w when we are doing a project for a housing, for example, people are more motivated to map to that than let's go map your the place where you live just because the, then OpenStreetMap will be updated. And um, uh, we have some issues with privacy and uh, even with tags in OpenStreetMap because the conceptual model maybe is not that suited uh, for places like that. This is one place uh, before and after the, in, in OpenStreetMap. And uh, now uh, we are currently working with ethics uh, because uh, it's a lot of effort, but we can create this information with locals. We are capacitating them in like uh, computer skill as well, and it's good for the mediators. And, uh, but somehow we can put a magnifying glasses in a population that uh, I put that, that image over there because sometimes you can uh, expose it, they are already vulnerability uh, people to the government or some hostile environment. So the ethics is a big part of it. So if you'd like to exchange some experience with our ideas, with our group, we have a lot of researchers in developing countries that are working with OpenStreetMap, so please talk to us. Thank you. Um, however, I'm standing in for, uh, 
with youth mappers, we give uh, our students opportunities to do research as well, but Sushil was not able to resolve his visa uh, situation in time, so um, this is on behalf of him and our other co-author students about workforce development. Um, I mentioned that, yes, we not only build maps, we build mappers, and they're Students are very interested in their future careers, as you can imagine. Um, so we have conducted a study this, this year to evaluate the impact of that participation on their workforce preparation. And this was our global network of 160 universities in 42 countries who had the opportunity to take this survey. Um, it, it was open for a few months earlier this year. Um, the analysis included t-tests, one-way ANOVA, to test for significance, demographic variables with their particular answers to those survey questions. And then we have a group from the United States, Ghana, Uganda, and Bangladesh are helping with that interpretation so that we make sure that we get that right understanding the results, right? So in all, uh, 223 um, answers were validated. I just go very quickly over some of the results. I'm happy to talk about it later. But we, what we found was that there that the longer that the youth mappers were participating in our project, there were statistically significant differences in acquisition of, or in the use of new tools, the acquisition of new skills, and their own self-reported proficiency in using those sorts of things. The group that we were grouping between people who had only participated for less than a year, between one and two years, and then two years and above. And, and on across all of those things, including geospatial competencies, um, they increased. Um, as well, we learned that the participation in Youth Mappers gave direct opportunities such as attending conferences, um, getting internships, and job offers, which was really, really wonderful. This was the same, not statistically significantly different between the female and male mappers. So they were getting these, these opportunities equally across genders. Um, we asked a lot of questions about, and these are all self-reported, about some of the soft job skills as well as, well as those hard geospatial competencies. And uh, you know, they reported learning, statistically significant learning across both. Some of the major ones were teamwork, uh, sort of preparation for a global workforce, creative thinking, critical thinking, and civil, civic engagement were the most often mentioned soft job skills. And in terms of the, the geospatial competencies, I might just point out that um, through the participation in this project, in their projects, they recognized more visibly the need for mobile end user applications. That was one of the things that they most often, that they were not getting in their classwork. Same thing with ethics and ethical issues. I think that's a really good one that getting out in the field that they really gained. Um, finally, another set, there's a lot more results, but another set of results had to deal with um, who um, were uh, participating, uh, we learned that they directly attribute their experiences in being better prepared for their professional careers, but there were statistically significantly higher rates of agreement with that from our youth mappers who were from countries in the south and for our female mappers. And this indicates to us that having a program that they have student leadership and their own chapter-led environment actually was a unique opportunity um, which goes beyond their regular curriculum and being able to prepare for the, these kinds of careers. So uh, just a few takeaway conclusions for you. Um, again, we really believe in the humanitarian mapping uh, as a preparation, not only as a good citizen, but also for very practical solutions of workforce. And uh, you know, we did see this model and this design of having some statistically significant results for our female mappers. Um, we understand that multi-year engagement and staging through the youth mappers process throughout their, their student career is really helping uh, gain more access to more tools, more skills, um, more proficiency, and it's a real opportunity for students in the Global South who may not have these same kinds of opportunities in any other platform. So thank you, thanks to USAID and our other sponsors. All right.